now what do I do? I've already picked up all the groceries, I've ran all my errands, and I've dropped the kids off at school. What's next? Oh, I got an idea. Hmm. Too light. Too big. Just right. So I had to do this while I had the truck. I found a big mound of dirt and, you know, this is a TRX after all. And it's got some pretty insane ground clearance as well as articulation. So I had to drive up something, kind of show you, I guess a closer view of what this rear suspension looks like. Almost have this back tire. Actually, I don't almost have this back tire off the ground. I could probably roll over that and still not have this back tire off the ground. But check that out. You wanna see the crazy angles you can position this thing out? Pretty cool, huh? Okay guys, so you've probably figured out by now the point of this video, and the point of this video is to hitch trailer behind this 2021 Ram TRX and see what it's capable of towing. Now, you can watch all sorts of videos on YouTube that show this truck doing all sorts of different things, including a really good video that the folks over at TFL put out, having this truck tow up and down the Ike Gauntlet with roughly a full load. So those are really great videos. But this video is a little different, and the reason why it's different is because on almost every video featuring a half-ton truck, regardless of the configuration, I always like to talk about some of the limitations trucks have. Now, it's not just half-ton trucks, but because half-ton trucks outsell any other type or configuration of truck, probably like six to one, it's always good information to know. This truck has so many great attributes. It has a beautiful interior. It's got so much power, so much horsepower and torque. It is simply a beast. And they've done such a great job of creating a truck that not just goes up against the current Raptor, but in many ways dominates it. That being said though, almost everything is a trade-off when it comes to trucks. If you have all this performance, all of these features, all of these amenities, the trade-off in terms of this truck, and really the only two trade-offs that you're gonna have with this truck are gonna be its payload capacity and its towing capacity. So the Ram TRX, as configured here, has slightly over a thousand pounds worth of payload capacity. But that can vary based on the configuration of the truck, based on the technology package, the luxury package, accessories that you add on the truck greatly. Some of these trucks can get as low as about 900 pounds and some of them can go up to a little over 1300 pounds in terms of maximum cargo capacity. Now that cargo capacity includes everybody sitting in the truck, all the gear you take with you in the truck, and anything you put in the bed, as well as whatever you hitch up behind the truck. So those are always important factors, especially if you plan on towing something like a travel trailer, utility trailer, cargo trailer, dump trailer, or anything else that's going to be hitched up in the back. Now, when I talk about the different types of trailers that you can tow with a truck like this, I always mention that a travel trailer is unique. It's unique in a couple ways. So it's tall, it's wide, relatively long. The axles tend to be positioned more towards the center, but more importantly, you don't really have a say-so in where stuff inside of that trailer is positioned and how the weight and balance of that trailer is configured when it's built. For instance, with a cargo trailer, you don't have a bathroom, you don't have a kitchen, you don't have a refrigerator, you don't have a bed, you don't have cabinets and storage and closets and all these things that you have to worry about. You have the ability to move stuff around inside of that trailer to position weight so it's balanced. On a dump trailer, you kind of also have some of those capabilities. But again, when you're dealing with something that's poured into the back, you know, that stuff can shift. So you wanna be careful there. On a travel trailer, the manufacturer chooses where all that stuff goes. You can pick a floor plan, but very rarely does somebody pick a floor plan based on how they feel it's gonna make the truck tow. They usually pick a floor plan based on what they like about that floor plan. So I'm leading into this just talking to you about it because when I talk about the different types of trailers you can tow, a 6,000 pound travel trailer is gonna be completely different than a 6,000 pound loaded cargo trailer or flat deck trailer because with the flat deck trailer or the cargo trailer, you dictate 
dictate where that weight is balanced inside of the trailer. I always get people saying, I've been towing this trailer for so long with this truck and I've had no problems at all, but rarely do people explain the exact configuration of trailer they have, how they load their trailer up, where the weight is, how they have their weight distribution hitch configured, all of that stuff because it all factors in. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to lead this video with that because it's important to know. We're going to hitch up my Texas Pride dump trailer behind this truck today. We'll go over some of the numbers and then we'll take it out for a quick spin to see how it tows. So hang tight. Now, before we hitch up to the Texas Pride dump trailer, this is a 14 foot dump trailer, dual axle. This is a 20,000 pound rated trailer. It's been derated to 12,000 pounds. But before we hitch up to this trailer, some people might ask, well, why aren't you hitching up to the cargo trailer? or the Van Lee. Well, first of all, the Van Lee's out of the question because it is huge. It is a fifth wheel. This is a half ton truck. It doesn't even have a place for a fifth wheel hitch. The payload capacity on this truck is a little over a thousand pounds. The pin weight on that specific fifth wheel is about 3,500 to 4,000 pounds. That would crush the suspension on this. It's not even an option. Now, the cargo trailer, good option. However, it's empty right now. Well, it's not empty, but it's not full. And this thing only weighs, as configured, maybe about 4,500 pounds. It only transfers about 500 pounds to the back of the truck as configured. So I could load this thing up with more gear, but again, you know, this thing is set up the way it is right now, and I don't have a bunch of stuff to load in it at the moment. The dump trailer, on the other hand, weighs about 6,000 pounds, a little less than 6,000 pounds as it sits. These things are all steel, very heavy, but they're designed to be able to haul a tremendous amount of weight. The typical build that you see in front of you is a 20,000 pound GVWR build, which means that this thing can usually haul up to about 14,000 pounds worth of dirt, aggregate, whatever you throw in the back of it. As configured, I have it derated, so it's about 6,000 pounds. And the purpose of derating it has been gone over multiple times in other videos. So look up Texas Pride Dump Trailer in my channel if you wanna see those videos on why I had this thing derated. Anyways, as it sits, and we'll remeasure it again, it transfers about six to 700 pounds as it sits empty to the back of the truck. Why is that important? Because your typical 6,000 pound travel trailer is gonna transfer anywhere between six and 700 pounds to the back of your truck. So this is really set up well. The big difference between something like this and something like this or something like that surveyor over there is where the axles are positioned. They are clearly positioned towards the back portion of the trailer, which means you're not gonna have that swing on the back and you're not gonna have a lot of weight on the back. On this trailer, most of the weight is positioned properly towards the front. So that's gonna be the big towing difference between something like this. But this will give us a really good understanding of what it's like to tow with the TRX at near its maximum towing capacity. Now, all TRXs have an 8,100 pound maximum towing capacity. So you're saying, well, this trailer weighs under 6,000 pounds. How is that at this truck's max? When you factor in the weight of a person or people, plus the tongue weight that's resting on the back of that truck, you're talking about hitting or possibly even slightly exceeding the maximum payload capacity of this truck. That is the first box you need to check before you move on to towing capacity with any pickup truck. Most people think that towing capacity rules all. It absolutely does not. You could have a Fiat tow a big trailer like this. Does that mean it can handle the weight? Does it mean it can safely stop it? And how far can it tow it before it destroys itself? That's what you need to understand with trucks. All of these trucks have the ability to tow. It's not the issue. How do they handle weight? How is the suspension? and all the other engineered components of this truck designed to handle the weight that's being placed on the truck in addition to the stuff that's going inside of the truck and in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and hitch up, but those are all things I want you to think about. Okay, so as I mentioned a second ago, we're gonna check the tongue weight with the way safe hitch that I have here. I've done several reviews on both the aluminum version of this as well as the steel version. I'm currently using the steel version of it on my F450, but I still have my aluminum version and I have a two inch shank for it. And that's the reason why we're using it here today. This has a 12,500 pound gross trailer weight limit and a 1,500 pound tongue weight limit. So we are perfectly fine for this dump trailer, but we're gonna double check it with this e-trailer tongue weight scale that they provided me. This is super cool. You simply lower your tongue onto this top ball assembly and it will give you your tongue weight. So this is very cool as well. Both of these are available at eTrailer.com and they're 
outstanding products. They give you a little bit more peace of mind to know how you're loading and what you're loading in terms of tongue weight to the back of your truck. So always good information to have. I'll put a link in the description of this video to both the Waysafe hitch as well as the e-trailer tongue weight scale. Before we start lowering the tongue weight onto this e-trailer scale, this is a 12,000 pound GVWR trailer. It has a cargo capacity of 6,400 pounds and it runs on twin 9,000 pound axles. Typically this exact build would say 20,000 pounds right there, but it says 12,000 pounds because we derated the trailer. Now, if you wanna look up the video that talks about that, just look up Texas Pride Trailers, Big Truck, Big RV, and you will see all the videos on this trailer and why we derated it to 12,000 pounds. I'm not gonna go over that here. Again, this is a really, really beefy trailer. Those axles are huge, and it runs 17 and a half inch Alcoa wheels. It has J-rated tires. Get your mind around that. That is just crazy, crazy in terms of load rating. So. We're going to go ahead and start lowering the front tongue onto the scale to see what the actual tongue weight as it sits is and what we're going to be transferring to the back of this truck and then checking again with the way safe scale. Okay, so there you have it. We have, shoot, over 700 pounds being transferred. So there's a 500 pound mark. There's the 750 pound mark. So we're probably right at about 725 pounds worth of tongue weight that's gonna be transferred to the back of this Ram. We'll double check it whenever we hitch it up to this way safe hitch. Okay, so now we're going to lower the tongue weight onto the way safe scale. Okay, so now we have it on the back of the way safe scale, which is showing 700 pounds. So there's a very, very small difference between the two scales, but definitely within the margin that they claim. And that is pretty, pretty dang accurate considering this one's showing 700 pounds and the e-trailer scale was showing 725 pounds. 